session, April 28th, 9 o'clock a.m. Doing our hybrid meeting uh, accessible by Zoom. Uh, item number one, Rebecca Reagan. I see Rebecca's on there. Are you ready to go? Yes, I am. All right, go ahead. All right, um, all of you received um, my packet. Anybody have any questions? I will say that interest rates are way down. CD rates are down. Um, we're not getting a lot for our money. And um, I'm trying not to lock up the cash in CDs because I'm hoping that they will be going up soon. But for right now, interest and CD interest is very, very low. Um, settlement went very well. We had uh, four new treasures, but they all did fairly well in settlement. Um, uh, so uh, we're seeing that housing sales are way up. Uh, homes that are SEVing for, um, I'll say like 80,000 are selling for like 133 to 150,000. So um, the uncapping has just been unbelievable. Also um, a little update on the new law. I've been updating all of our information online and also pamphlets with um, the new information that people are able to after the taxes have been paid <clears throat> and um, a 5% uh, commission for the county is uh, taken out, they will be able to apply for the excess proceeds after foreclosure. Uh, this year we had 36 parcels that were foreclosed. So that's way down, which is good. And um, actually settlement was less this year by 466,000, which is good. I don't know if people were using their stimulus check to pay their back taxes, but um, we were down significantly. So the tax payment fund has got a um, fairly good amount in it. And that is preparing for us to have to pay back six years worth of excess proceeds, which the legislation um, has not been passed yet. They're still working on that. And um, between the legislators and um, the Supreme Court, they're kind of coming up with how many years and how much we're gonna have to pay back. So for our county, we have enough. I've already calculated it. Everybody asked for their excess. We do have enough to cover it. So our county will not have to bond or uh, borrow for that money. All right, good. So back to interest rates real quick. <clears throat> so everything's short term in case things start to go up where you can lock it in for a better rate for longer, correct? Correct. I've been utilizing um, MBIA class funds because they have the highest rate of um, interest and in keeping it uh, in cash. Okay, all right. I have no other questions. Any commissioner have any other question of uh, Rebecca, please? Okay, seeing or hearing none. Thank you, Rebecca. You're very welcome. You guys have a good day. On to number two, we've got an application from the Ross Common EDC board in regards to uh, Wendy Engel uh, for a position. So um, that's been brought forward to us from the Economic Development Corporation. So um, that's something that I'd like to uh, put on for the next meeting for a motion to approve Wendy. Does anybody have any questions in regards to her application? Does that say no? Does that say no, David? Okay. All right. So hearing none, I guess we will go. And we do have an EDC meeting tomorrow morning, and I will follow up with that to make sure that uh, Everything's in right order here, okay? Item number three, Gypsy Moth program update. I see Daniel's on here. Uh, is Julie on here? There she yes, is, I... I see her, okay. So yep. uh, da Julie and Daniel, I'm gonna turn it over to you and I don't know which one's going first, but go ahead. Good morning, this is Julie. I'll start us off and then turn it over to Daniel. Um, we last gave the board an update in February and we just wanted to pick up where we left off. Uh, we did offer the addition, uh, we did offer people to add acreage to the Gypsy Moth spray block maps. And we had six individuals and organizations take us up on that. 
The county is paying for 26,010 acres to be sprayed. Um, six more spray blocks were added, including um, Mid Forest Lodge, who added over 7,000 acres, as well as MDOT, who added 80 acres of uh, right of way along our freeways to the spray block acreage. So the total acreage that we're spraying is 33,956 acres, and that's an approximate, but that's quite a hefty acreage, and that's the most I think we've done at least since the 90s. So we're excited about that. We're doing a lot of promotion this spring to be sure that people have some strategies that they can use on their own to manage gypsy moth if they're not in a spray block or if we have a second hatch like we did last year. This Saturday, May 1st, we'll be in the village of Ross Common at the village cleanup for a couple of hours. Um, we have a May 5th webinar next Wednesday. There's a webinar from 4 to 5 p.m. We invite everybody to attend where we'll give an overview of the life cycle and then take questions from both Clare and Roscommon counties for the spray programs. Uh, Rebecca Sova did a fantastic wanted flyer to encourage people to remove egg masses from their trees. Uh, the flyer got 4,000 hits on Facebook, so it's, it's really reaching a lot of people out there. And we have an article in the Resorter and the Up North Voice to encourage egg mass removal as well as promote the May, May 5th webinar. And I'll turn it over to Daniel to talk a little bit more about our application. Hi, can everyone hear me all right? Mm -hmm. I hope. Um, okay, so the early months of the year are kind of a little bit of a slow season for gypsy moth, but that doesn't mean we haven't stayed busy. Um, one of the things that I recently got to participate in at the end of March uh, was I went down to Ovid, Michigan, which is near Lansing, for those of you who don't know. Um, and I went to Els, Els Aerial Spring and participated in the spray calibration event where we dialed in all of the equipment that we use and um, got it all certified by the uh, USDA. And so I can assure everyone that the equipment is in good working order. And uh, when the time comes, we are ready to rock and roll with that. Um, the other good takeaway from that was I got to uh, talk to some of the program directors from uh, other gypsy moth programs around the state. Um, I think the general consensus is that 2020 was a bad year everywhere. So, you know, we can, it was not just us in Ross Common County who were hit hard. Um, and so hopefully this year we're gonna put a dent in the little buggers. Um, one of the other things I've been working on is uh, I got our permit submitted to uh, Eagle and the DNR. And uh, so that's all, all in the books. And now we're just waiting for them to, uh, get back to us and let us know, but I don't foresee any issues with that. So uh, I'll pass it back to Julie. Our next steps are monitoring for hatch. I got a text yesterday from a colleague in Isabella County with an egg mass that had hatched, actually several. So it's coming in the next few weeks. Um, Daniel and I will be traveling throughout the county starting next week, just monitoring our, um, the egg masses in our spray blocks to be sure that we catch them when they do hatch. And then we'll be coordinating with Al to be sure that we um, get the right spray date. As everybody knows, there's really certain conditions that need to be met in order for the spray to be effective. The two most big, the two biggest ones are the oak leaf should be about half developed and the caterpillars need to be in this first or second instar phase. If they've gone into the third phase, they're no longer lethally affected by the BTK. They just get kind of a stomach ache and move on. So we've really got to work hard to catch that in the next few weeks. When we're going to spray depends on the weather. <clears throat> have no idea what's going to happen because we've had such an up and down sort of weather year and been accumulating growing degree days since March. So it's kind of an odd year. Um, but we do have a list of notification venues and we'll be sure that all of those are hit when spray date does come. And we'll be sure to give you all at least a, a brief update during the next commissioner's meeting as to where we are with monitoring. And that wraps it up for me. Daniel, did you want to say a few words to about hiring this season? Um, so yeah, we, uh, we've been working and gearing up for our uh, 2021 survey season here. Um, I've been learning the mapping software and I've got some good maps uh, created. If any of our commissioners are interested, uh, we do have paper maps of our spray blocks that I can provide to you. Um, just send me an email, let me know. Um, I also have those maps broken down into individual townships. So like I say, if you'd like a, a physical copy for yourself, let me know and I can get that to you. Um, and then the other note is that uh, we're hiring or at least accepting applications uh, for our survey crews. 
Um, people can apply online at rosscommoncounty.net uh, forward slash jobs. Um, I also have physical paper copies uh, for people who prefer doing it the old fashioned way. And I will have some of those posted outside the office uh, as of this morning. And uh, this year we're gonna be starting a little bit earlier. Uh, so we plan on beginning our, beginning our interview process uh, the week of July 16th. So, you know, put the word out there if you know anyone who's looking for a gypsy moth job, we'd love to have them. So I think that about wraps it up for me. Any questions? Tim, you're the chairman of that. Any Anything you need to add to this? Um, <clears throat> no. Um, I myself, I'm going to get a map of Denton Township and take a copy of it down there to the township office so if people have questions, they can actually see where they're going to be spraying at. So hopefully that'll answer a lot of questions for uh, Denton Township because they get calls all the time about it, I guess. Yep. That's my and, and Daniel, if you could get a copy of my free township to me, I'd appreciate it, all right? I will take care of that for anyone who's interested. Just let me know. Like I say, if you'd like to send me an email, just so I remember, I would appreciate that. Gotcha. Okay, Commissioner Melvin. Yes, uh, I have a question for Julie. It's not actually about the gypsy moth, but as long as she's here before she leaves, MSUE offices are still closed. Your guidelines and CDC protocols um, are still in effect. I was uh, participated in a um, Zoom meeting yesterday and several entities would not have been allowed to do an in-person meeting. Are, is that the case with MSU? If this meeting here today was an in-person meeting, would you be allowed to attend? I would have had to have applied for a special travel waiver to attend. And that would have, had, I would have had to have pledged to wear a mask, distance from people. It may or may not have been approved, especially because it's indoors and depending on the spacing issue of the room itself. And so we, we are allowed to apply for individual events, moments that we can attend, um, but it's on a case-by-case -case basis at this time. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right. Any other commission? Any other commissioners have any questions, please? Okay. Hearing or seeing none. On to uh, number four, Cherry Capital Connections LLC. Tim Malone. Tim, I've never met you personally, but I see you're on board here. Uh, I assume you're in Lansing. If you've got capital, capital, uh, Cherry Capital, right? Yes, I'm sorry. We're just trying to find the mute button. I, I do apologize. Uh, I have Justin here. He's going to do the presentation. Uh, I have to go get my second vaccination shot. Uh, came up on my text this morning that, that I need to go do that today. Um, but so I'm, I'm Justin Malone, and I'll be doing the presentation. Okay, Justin, go ahead. All right. I'm going to try to pull up a, uh, a PowerPoint for you guys to look at. Yeah, can we share our screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Can everybody see that screen? I can. Okay. Yes. Cool. Okay. Fiber for everyone. Cherry Capital to our connections. Uh, we're in the business of building supporting and operating a fiber optic network. Uh, our vision plan and so our vision is to be the premier operator delivering ultra high speed wireline broadband throughout northwestern Michigan. Our mission is to accelerate deployment of fiber access networks by demonstrating that gig capable infrastructure applications and solutions uh, create value for the community and customers 
promotes economic development and enhances the quality of life. CCC experience. Uh, we participate with WISPA, that's the Wireless Internet Service Provider Association uh, that represents companies like Cherry Capital uh, on a national level. Uh, we've also been invited to participate with uh, Representative Bergman. Uh, he created a broadband advi advisory board, so he asked us to participate in that. Uh, we're also a uh, a CLEC, which is a, you know, we're, we're registered with the state of Michigan as a, as a telephone company. So that, that allows us to participate under the, the Metro Act and, you know, gives us access to the road right of ways. Uh, we also are a uh, ETC. Uh, we are, we have an ETC number, which allows us to accept federal funding um, yeah, so historically, uh, you know, we, we have 20 years of experience. Uh, historically, we've, uh, we've connected homes and businesses utilizing uh, wireless technology. Uh, in 2019, we started putting a fiber optic cable uh, or building a fiber optic cable networks. Uh, we've successfully, since 2019, September of 2019, we've, we've uh, successfully put 42 miles of what we call mainline fiber. That's the fiber that runs along the road right away. Uh, and then it, it ends up being about the same amount uh, running a wire from the road to the house is what we call drop fiber. Uh, so about 42 miles of mainline, 42 miles of drop fiber. Uh, historically, you know, uh, things that we run into that make that job, you know, you know, impediments, uh, make it more difficult. With wireless, it, it was always zoning and environmental uh, issues. Uh, with fiber, <laughs> probably the number one thing is just most consumers don't believe that it can be done. Uh, it, it, in fact, when we start a project, we get X amount of signups. And then once they see the machines working and getting the fiber in the ground, we get, you know, X amount more, more signups because they, they, they always say that, oh, we just didn't think it, it was going to happen. Uh, Northern Michigan lacks places to to get out to the internet, what we call middle mile fiber. Uh, so, so getting back to the metro areas where there's large data centers, where you know all the wires come back to, uh, there's there's not a lot of options uh, in Northern Michigan. So, that's been a struggle. Uh, you know, access to utility right of ways and, and private roads, you know, having to work with private roads, getting easements, you know, from all the private homeowners, uh, and then capital. Uh, building this kind of infrastructure is very uh, expensive. But once that infrastructure is built, uh, value to the customer, uh, Number one thing uh, we, we hear is you know, customer satisfaction goes up. Uh, that, that fiber connection, they, it's very reliable and uh, their satisfaction goes up. Also increases home value by three to five percent. So whatever investment the homeowner makes uh, in getting connected, because that's part of our model is, uh, you know, the homeowner uh, you know, we'll pay a certain amount to get connected. Uh, we try to keep that as, you know, re reasonable and uh, affordable as possible. But, but the money doesn't go out the window. It, it actually attaches itself to the value or the resale value of the home. And uh, fiber is very reliable. 
and, 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 and generational. You know, uh, copper networks were put in the ground 100 years ago and still being used today. Fiber is very similar. Value to the community uh, attracts high paying jobs. So there's a, a trend where, you know, people are working from home. You know, obviously the pandemic has, you know, made that a, taken it from a novelty to a norm. Uh, people no longer have to work or live near where they work. So they, they can actually move to these rural areas where they want to live anyway and, and, and bring their high paying jobs with them. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, telehealth opportunities. You know, you no longer have to necessarily you know, go to the doctor, go to the hospital for a checkup. You know, there, there's uh, there's a lot of innovation happening with telehealth where you can just stay at home and see the doctor uh, from home. Uh, we have a, a five-step process um, for, for successfully taking a, a home or business from unconnected to connected. Uh, starts with a petition. The petition is uh, there, there's no no commitment, but but it just lets us know that you would if a, a network like this was available, you'd be interested in connecting. Once we have collected all the petitions, we can design the network to to support all those uh, interested homes and businesses, and then funding. Uh, you got to. You know, we, we, we have several different ways that we can fund building networks like this. Once it's funded, we start construction. And then uh, once construction's finished, we were able to get uh, everybody connected. Ross Common, uh, there was, uh, we participated in a, in a, you know, the, an RDOF, which is the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund. We successfully were awarded support for the, the seven townships that you see in pink. Yeah, if you, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but these are, you know, the purple areas represent the areas where we are receiving support uh, through the RDOF program in these areas. So we'll be constructing fiber optic networks in these areas. Uh, the benefit of fiber optic, is it, it can provide you with gig level service. Uh, consequently, 85% of all the winning applicants were gig level or fiber optic level uh, winners. So there's a there's a real there's a real trend towards building gig level networks. That's where every year we see data transmission uh, uh, doubling. So so having a gig level network is going to be uh, essential to to all future today and future telecommunication needs. Uh, Ross Common, uh, we, we won the largest amount of support and largest amount of uh, locations in Ross Common. And we're very excited to be uh, building uh, in Ross Common. This map, uh, if you look at this number, this is the amount of homes that we are anticipating or planning on passing in these purple areas. We're, we're looking to start in A, we're looking to start uh, August of this year and uh, complete building the, the fiber optic network in, in A by September 2023. Uh, B would be March 2024 and complete that by October 2024 and then C 
would be October 2025 to May 2026. Uh, anticipated funding is RDOF. And we're, we're utilizing uh, methods that we've developed over the past 20 years. Now there, there is opportunity to increase that number to, to this number. There are homes kind of near or just outside these purple areas that would require additional funding. Uh, counties and townships are gonna be receiving funds via the American Recovery Fund uh, that can be used for sewer, water, and broadband. So at a future date, we'd love to talk more about that with Ross Common and the different townships. Uh, in conclusion, let's see. We have a viable plan. Uh, CCC is very proud to be one of 110 applicants that uh, were chosen out of a field of 1,200 uh, for this RDOF program. Very, it was a very competitive program and a very uh, there was a lot of scrutiny uh, for for our for our plan. Fiber is a 21st century utility, and there is a cost to connect, just like other utilities. You know, there's a cost when you hook up to the electrical grid. There's a cost when you hook up to the natural gas grid, water and sewer. You know, Ardoff, they they looked at us. You know, the technical aspects of our of our submission. Uh, the FCC engineers went through it. It's been vetted. Uh, they also looked at the financial viability of it. They looked at that and, and uh, accepted that. They also looked at the timeline and accepted that. Uh, we we have a you know company history. Uh, and proven capability of connecting the unconnected. Uh, we, we are asking for an audience with government officials to determine the benefit to the county in having access to dark fiber, uh, expanding the service base that, that by giving access to the dark or having access to dark fiber that will also expand the service base and and we can talk about how achieving this goal is feasible under uh, ARP funds. So in conclusion, we are in offering or giving an invitation to Ross Common County and its fellow townships. We think, uh, we, we believe everyone can have fiber and there's a greater level of success when we all work together. Is there is there any questions? Um, I just have a quite I have a question. Have, have you reached out to these seven townships and made a presentation to them also? Great question. Uh, that 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 is going to be the next step. Now that we've introduced ourselves to the county, we're going to start introducing ourselves to the townships. Okay. Yeah. With the the, the first the first meeting we had was with the uh, the Ross Common Economic Development Group. Okay. All right. I, I was just curious because two of those two of those townships are out of, of the three I represent. So I and I know it's a I know uh, internet is a big problem in all three of them. So excellent. Well, I mean, not not <laughs> I, yeah. that, that's a problem we can help you solve. I should. Say. All right. Right. Under understood. All right. Uh, any any other commissioners have any questions, please? I don't see anything. So if you could get us back to our uh, yeah. change the sharing. And I, I, I thank you for the presentation and I oh, I'm, thank you for your time. You're welcome. And keep us keep us posted on what's happening, okay? We, oh a, a, absolutely. All right, thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, I can't if you go stop. Oh stop sharing. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, I didn't.
I, did, I only had five or six of you on the side of my thing here, but I take it everybody was satisfied with that, correct? Okay, good. On to uh, review of the local extension order discussion of the whole. And uh, I'm going to go to uh, Commissioner Russo on this because this is something that he's been working on. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I did talk to Julie from MSU and a few other people. MSU uh, looks like they're October out on this. We have a large bank in Holton Lake that is closed right now for 10 days because of COVID. And I think we really should, from talking to Julie and a few other people, I don't think we should extend it to October, but I think we should extend this lease for 60 days to July 1st. Uh, for the simple fact, in May, we get a lot of people that are coming back from Florida, opening up their cottages. Instead of revisiting this the end of May for June, I think we should see how it goes and revisit this the first meeting in July. This way, it gives a chance for everyone to come back, open their places. My, I have to agree with the townships that want this. There's a lot of clerks treasures and supervisors that work in the same building and if they have to contaminate uh, for 10 days and if it's in the middle of the meeting they can't do their payrolls uh, pay their employees or anything unless we approve this and then they could do their meetings on zoom so i think uh my recommendation after following up with everyone would be this time around to go at least to july 1st Thank you. Okay, any other? Yes, Ken Melvin. Yes, I've been talking with David about this also. And then yesterday in our LEPC meeting, it was pointed out that the state police, the uh, health department, and the Red Cross were entities that would not have been able to participate in an in person meeting. And I believe, um, I remember the state police said it was gonna be through July. So, um, the, you know, if, if we don't do this, we're making it nearly impossible to conduct a meeting uh, with uh, representatives from all of the critical uh, resources that we need to have participate. Hey, any other commissioner? You're, you're muted, Mark. No, you're muted. Where do you go? Yeah, Bob, I, I went dead on my uh, computer. Yeah, I, I'm agreeing with Dave. I, I just took some notes. It's incremental, flexible, it can be adjusted. I think Dave's done his homework and I agree with Dave. Okay, Thank you. Uh, Tim, might as well go to you. You want to weigh in on this? Um, yeah, it's something that we should do. Um, I was thinking 30 days, but I mean, if everybody else wants to go 60, I can get on board with that. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Um, I as well was considering 30 days. Um, now, straighten me out if, I, if, I, if I'm confused on this, but let's make sure we got this out in the open, but we can... As commissioners, I'd like to see us meet in our meeting room next week because we have the technology to go hybrid. So our next meeting in April, we could do that. And then any other commissioner that's not comfortable with that could still zoom in. That's the way it works, right, David? Correct. Okay. I was thinking 30 days. Uh, and the reason why is, is because of Memorial Weekend. Um, you know, and I was kind of looking at... Uh, making it effective through the 27th of May. But, you know, I, I'm, it's no big deal to me if we make it. It's not going to really interfere. It just gives the townships more to do. I mean, they got more flexibility. I did check with my three township supervisors, and as far as they were concerned, they were all going to meet personally, but then offer Zoom also. So all we're doing is, is making sure that you can continue to Zoom in. So... You're correct. But, you know, instead of revisiting this in 30 days, 
you know, after talking with these people, let's just make it 60 days and it'll just make it easier. So it just saves us uh, essentially more time on our work session. Okay, well, and when I look at the resolution, uh, the first paragraph is talking about declaring a local state of emergency in Roscommon County due to increasing numbers. Then the next paragraph says, while well, again trending downward in COVID-19 cases continues to see high average. Well, you know, as of this morning, Roscommon County had only had six reported cases of uh, COVID, which is way down. So, and it seems to be trending down the last, last two weeks. So I'm just throwing it out there. You know, I don't care if you want to make it, it really doesn't change anything except give the townships a little bit more option um for meeting so yeah i would like to see it 60 days after talking with julie and stuff and i can feel really comfortable with that so are you expecting to do that today yes so you'd we like to have, have that, to that added to the to the work session yes and bob i think we need to be sensitive to the municipalities the, the townships because i think dave's done his homework and i know i was looking at 30 but after listening to dave you mentioned his office that flexibility is incremental. Uh, it, it's errors on safety. 60 days is the way to fly. Okay, and we can resend it anyway in 30 days if we wanted to, correct? We can, but the thing is, it would be, I think it would be unwise because we want to make sure the townships, we offer that leadership element. And I think 60 days does offer that leadership element and does offer that flexibility. And as I mentioned earlier, it's safety. Right, I understand that, but one of the things I don't want to do is, and set any precedent is, is that we're that we're trying to dictate to the townships. No, and what they, they what they can and can't do. I mean, this is an option for them, right? That's great, and they understand that, Bob. <clears throat> okay, all right, okay, no problem. Um, I don't have any problem with putting it on for a motion today. Does any other commissioner have any objections? So. Well, you know, if we, if we don't put it on for today, we'll have to have a special meeting because our, our current state of emergency will expire before the uh, next township, which would be Higgins Township, would have their meeting. And they would not have that option uh, if we don't pass it today or have a, yeah. another special meeting. Well, I'm just following procedure here, Ken. Procedure is, is that it's presented and then two weeks they get voted on, but this is time sensitive. So I would say that this does not apply. I agree, Bob, thank you. All right. I'm sensitive, doesn't apply, I agree too. All right, okay. So I, I, as chairman, I just wanted permission from the rest of the board members to put this on, okay? Because our policy is that we would wait two weeks, but under the circumstances, I feel we can't, so we'll put it on for today. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other discussion on that from any commissioners? All right, um, we've got some time here um, before our next meeting. I've got a lady, Barbara Klimasuski. Did I say that right? Klimashevsky, but you're not the first one to mispronounce it. I know that'll be a surprise to you. Uh, no, that, yeah, that was a real surprise to me. Anyway, <laughs> she's from MIDC Mid Michigan Regional Manager, and she's going to uh, ask if she could be put on. Uh, this was after the agenda meeting. Uh, I was going to put her on at ten o'clock, but I see she's already here. So, the sake of time, if you if you want to make your presentation now, you don't have to do it later. Sure, that'd be great. I appreciate okay, it. Go, go ahead. Okay, well, I'm the regional manager for Mid Michigan. I cover 23 counties that go from the east to the west across the basically the middle of the state, and that includes you folks in Roscommon County. Um, the Michigan Indigent Defense Commission just want to give you a little background about who we are and what we do. We were created in uh, 2015 after several studies showed that the state of Michigan was not doing an adequate job of providing defense for people that are charged with criminal offenses in the uh, Michigan court system. Uh, so the commission was created and lots of things happened. I can answer any questions if anybody's interested in any of the, of the background information, but the bottom line is that since 2019, we've been providing funding to help 
uh, local systems uh, improve the quality of the criminal defense that is offered to their citizens. So we've, uh, our commission is tasked with a variety of things, including issuing standards for uh, criminal defense attorneys. And we've had up until now four standards in effect. There's some more pending, but right now four have been in effect. Those require continuing legal education for the attorneys. Uh, they require the attorney to contact their client within three business days after they're appointed to represent them. They require them to increase their use of experts and investigators as needed for uh, the defense of those who are charged with crimes. And also uh, one of the biggest changes is to provide counsel at first appearance for people who are charged with crimes. Uh, so when you make your first appearance in court, there's an attorney available to represent you at that arraignment. This year, our commission has passed a new standard which is establishing independence from the judiciary. So the whole system of appointing attorneys and paying attorneys for the work that they do in representing indigent defendants is out of the hands of the court and in the hands of the local system, which is you. Uh, your county has established what's called a managed assigned counsel system. You have an attorney, Troy Daniel, who's done a very fine job of administering this program in your county. Uh, so he oversees the attorneys that get appointed. He also monitors their bills. He approves their experts and investigators uh, and makes sure that they are attending their training uh, every year as required. Uh, the establishment of these standards is accompanied with a requirement that the state has to pay for everything that you do that is required to carry out our standards. And so for the, since 2019, you've been getting a little over $200,000 a year from the state of Michigan uh, to fund the standards that we have put into effect. Uh, the FY22 application has just gone in and that raises the request up to 218,000 and some odd dollars for the FY22 uh, cycle. And because that standard five is in effect, we anticipate that there will be some additional time required by your managed assigned counsel attorney and his staff to uh, oversee the program to make sure that everybody gets their attorneys appointed uh, in a timely fashion and make sure that everything is working the way that it should be working. Uh, so that uh, that's sort of it in a nutshell. I'm happy to answer any questions. Just wanted to, to Jody asked me to, to bring you folks up to speed to, as to just what we're doing. Uh, we've been in a big scramble over the last several days because we had a hard statutory deadline to get those FY22 applications in. And so uh, we've been kind of crazy doing all that because we've also instituted a, a new technology system to make that happen through eGrams. So um, your application was submitted. We're just beginning the review process on all those grants, but um, the funding looks stable through the legislature. We, we have a lot of support. A very interesting thing, happened that made this program come into existence. And that is that it, it is truly a bipartisan support program. Uh, people from the total political spectrum uh, supported this all the way. Um, it, I mean, one of the authors of the bill uh, was uh, Tom McMillan, who is, has been serving on our commission for the last six years uh, as a, a designee of the Speaker of the House. And he, he considers himself one of the founders um, and, and drafters of this legislation. So that's, that's a person who's from a very conservative point of view. It's also supported by the ACLU. It was part of a settlement of an ACLU lawsuit about attorney fees in the state of Michigan. That kind of bipartisan support has continued across the board and it looks like it's gonna hold true for FY22. We are, uh, we are looking at a stable funding into the future because of that bipartisan support. So I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Okay, going to any commissioner out there, anybody got a question for Barbara in regards to her update for us, in regards to engine and defense? Yes, Ken Malman. Uh, thank you, Barbara. That uh, was a very informative um, presentation. Um, I learned a few things there and uh, thank you for your clarification and explanation of the program. You're very welcome. Okay, any other commissioner? 
Sound good. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you, Barbara. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me this morning. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Glad we could work you in early. Hope that worked out for you. It did very well. Thank you very much. All right. Good. All right. I'm looking at my clock through my window here, and it looks like it's about uh, 945. So we'll be back here at 10 o'clock, and we will put the declaration for the uh, continuation of the emergency for Roscommon County will be on as number four. Uh, I do want to clarify the date, David. Are you looking at, uh, is it June 30th you're looking at? I had to unmute, uh, okay. yeah, it's June 30th. Okay, June 30th is a, okay. Well, That's we could a, even go July 1st on the Thursday, Bob. I don't care which one you want, we gotta have one or the other. Uh, the 30th would be sufficient on one. Okay, uh, the date will be June 30th, 2021, okay? Thank you. Okay. That will be motion number four. So Teresa, did, that'll help you. You got 15 minutes to prepare, all right? Okay, I've already got a copy of it, so I'm sure the rest of us will all have it by then too, okay? All right, we'll be back here at 10 o'clock. Thank you everybody for attending. Everyone back here? I'm waiting for Mr. Melvin. I don't see Mr. Melvin and I don't see uh, Mr. Russo. I guess it doesn't do much good to talk about it either. I still can't see him. <laughs> I'm here. All right, there you are. Okay, and then there's there's Mr. Russo. Okay, and I'm looking to see if our, uh, Teresa, are you out there as far as the clerk's office? Yep, good morning. Okay, just wanted to make sure you're there and I think we're ready to go. So we will call this meeting of the Ross Common County Board of Commissioners, April 28th, 10 o'clock AM via Zoom. Um, Mr. Milburn, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Okay, Mr. Milburn, you were muted, but I didn't want to interrupt you, but I could hear you through the wall, so. Uh, You're still muted. All right, so anyway, you got it? All right. We'll see if you have somebody can help you there as far as getting you unmuted, we'll continue though, all right? We're good now, Bob. Okay, so they'll, thank they'll hook me All right. up. All right, on to number three. Roll call of board members, please. Russo. Present. Melvin. I'm here at my home at 9460 Oakwood Drive, Roscommon, Michigan, participating via. I'll make a correction. I'm working out of my house office at 13285 West Shore Drive, Holton Lake. Okay. Snyder. I am here and I'm at the office at the county building at this time. Thank you. Melbourne. I'm here at the county building. Thank you. Mockenfeller. I am here at the county building in my office. Okay, thank you very much. Everybody's accounted for. Item number four, approval of the agenda, please, with the addition. And guys, I'm assuming that everybody got a copy of resolution 2021-04-2 in regards to the continuation of the declaration of a local state of emergency for the County of Ross Common through June 30th of 2021. Everybody so on board? With the addition of number four, Mr. Chair. Pardon me? 
So moved with the addition of number four, Mr. Chair. Okay, we will make that resolution number four. Okay. I'll motion second been, that. Motion has been made by Commissioner Milburn and seconded by Commissioner Russo to add that to our agenda as uh, motion number four. So with that, any other any other changes or questions in regards to the agenda? Hearing none and um, seeing none, would I have a second and a or could I have a motion and a second, please? So move, Mr. Chair. I'll second that. Okay. Motion is made by um, Commissioner Milburn, seconded by Commissioner Russo to put it on on the agenda. Any further discussion regards to the agenda? Hearing or seeing none, roll call. Makathaler. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Melvin. Yes. Russo. Yes. Milburn. Yes. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Item number five, public comment, please. Do I have any com public comment out there, please, at this time? There is another one at the end of the meeting, um, but this is the first one that starts the meeting. Do I have any public comment out there, please, at this time? Emil Bellabop, please. Okay, Emil, go ahead. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, last Wednesday uh, at the Commission on Aging meeting, uh, Mr. DeMud, who's the attorney for uh, the COA said, he would be meeting with Nemska attorney until uh, the deadline of April the 30th to cut off the funds of the $391,000 uh, that they get from Nemska. Uh, if no resolution, uh, then they, uh, he would file in a court, uh, uh, in court for an injunction to stop the cutoff. Uh, sounds like we have a lot of legal fees coming up. Uh, and I'm waiting here today uh, to hear from uh, Mark Milburn about what he knows about any last minute resolutions of the parties. Uh, thank you very much for your time, sir. Okay, thank you for your comments. Any other public comment out there at this time, please? Yes, Leroy Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. Um, about the, uh, the, the broadband presentation that we heard earlier during the work session is, does, does the, do any of the commissioners know is what, what the individual cost for individual citizens is going to be for that? Um, is that something depending on cost, could that be expanded throughout the county? Um, I'm just trying to get a little bit more information on, on what they're proposing. Okay. It looks well, looks like they have a governmental grant to construct that. For uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I, I just wonder what the cost is going to be to the citizens down the road. Thank you. Correct, Leroy. Just for what I know, today was our first presentation from this company, also. So we we learned firsthand, like you did. So okay. you, you got you got it hot off the press. Just like we did, which is why I ask about my perspective, my my uh, three townships because you know they were included in those seven town. Two of them were included in those seven townships. That, yep, when I looked at the the map there for one, two, and three, particularly Richfield and Bacchus, I didn't see anything on them. So I just I think that I think what they needed to do personally, and that's why I suggested they need to get to the township level and communicate what's going on too. So that was our very first presentation. So I'm assuming the same thing you are, that there's monies out there that they've got, because they did have a timetable when they were going to start some construction. So that you know what we got. So we'll, hopefully we'll find out a little bit more, okay? Thank you, sir. All right, thank you for your comments. Any other uh, public comment, please? Mr. Milburn, you've got a hand showing on your screen. Does that mean you got a question? I don't have a hand up, Bob. Okay, never mind. It was me. <laughs> All right. Any other public comment out there? One more time.
All right, thank you. We'll move on to number six, administrator controller report, please. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Um, quick lawsuit update in the legal world. Our Zelke versus Roscommon um, is slated for pretrial in late 2021 with depositions and fact finding not looking to take place until mid 2022. Um, so we'll be uh, lengthy and drawn out on that. In the same sense, the Ostrigan et al versus Roscommon County in regards to Higgins Lake does not have a schedule set. And it isn't anticipated that we will actually see any type of scheduling until the end of 2021. Um, so if you're looking at a, you know, a minimum of a year's period working into the Court of Appeals, I would say probably not much until um, December of 2022. And um, hold tight and we'll see where that goes. We also have uh, arbitration that is being scheduled. Uh, our attorney, our labor attorney is working with the labor attorney for the POAM, Roscommon County Sheriff's Office, and they will look at agreeing upon a arbitrator and then we will work with that arbitrator for scheduling. The last that I knew, which was as of yesterday, we had not um, agreed to an arbitrator yet. Therefore, we don't have any dates set in mind, but I'm guessing sometime this summer will be when we see, um, see that come to fruition. And obviously we will follow our labor attorney's lead and guidance in that matter because she is the expert. Um, Projects that I'm currently working on, um, the solid waste packet, getting that finalized and sent in, um, the engineering bid packet for repairs to the Holton Lake Dam, the um, other portion that we've been working on is just identifying some infrastructure projects that the county will need to potentially tackle in the next year, one of them being um, the public parking lot across the street, and obviously any repairs that may be needed to um, any other infrastructure as far as our lake level control structures, Houghton Lake obviously being um, the primary need at this point. I did want to let you know that those projects have all kind of taken a backslide right now because our audit does start on Monday. The primary uh, primary focus for me and this office as we approach that time, uh, the few weeks before and then in the three weeks that our auditor is on site is getting everything organized, prepared, at hand working with the department heads to make sure that any of the information they may need to provide is organized and ready. So he will be here Monday with bells on, he said. So that's a good thing. Uh, one other kind of note item that I would like to point out to you is that um, traditionally we've always outsourced somebody for landfill operations. Doesn't cost us a lot, um, but it's about $5,000 that we could be putting into the actual removal of lachet that we have um, not, not been able to do. This year in speaking with Nick Johnson, who is our new director of maintenance and facilities, they're actually gonna take that project on. So we'll be able to take that 5,000 from um, a contracted person to actually performing the removal of that. Obviously at some someday when, you know, our grandchildren are old, we will be, um, we will be done with that project, but the more they, more we pump, the sooner we get there. So that's a, that's a positive. Um, as you heard Barb say earlier in the work session, we did submit our fiscal year 2022 plan. Um, her coming last minute was my fault. I, I, you know, just thought it would be nice for you guys to, to hear what everything was all about. So I do appreciate the chairman squeaking her in like that. Additionally, um, I just wanted to touch on a topic that I have had a couple of commissioners and a few residents approach me about in regards to the Commission on Aging Millage Money. Um, after our last meeting, I had you know a dozen, dozen or so requests or questions. I just want to clarify that that millage money is specific to, um, per language, the Ross Common County Commission on Aging. So there is no legal way for the Board of Commissioners to uh, divert that money to another, another entity. The millage funds collected through the treasurer's office must go to the Ross Common County Commission on Aging. Um, the other and final thing is I've been attending, you know, these brief meetings on the American Rescue Plan funds that we should be receiving that first half mid-May. There was really no new guidance. Um, 
we are looking for the US Department of Treasury to put out a frequently asked questions, how you can spend the money type of handbook but the National Association of Counties and the Michigan Association of Counties have both alluded to the fact that they do not anticipate we will see that in probably the, until probably the beginning of summer. We will have the money before we know what we're allowed to spend it on in technical terms. Um, following that, I did find out while I was attending the National Association of Counties meeting that there is actually a separate package in the works for broadband funding for rural communities coming through another um, COVID relief fund bill at a federal level. So that is something I think that we need to keep in mind. Um, and another reason that, you know, I think, you know, you put a plan together, um, let the money sit and until we clearly know what we're gonna do and what other funding might be available for some of these specific projects. So that is everything. Okay, you have any commissioners have any questions of the controller, please? Okay, uh, I would like to just at this time refer to back to the COA at this point, you know, because this whole thing is involves the COA who has their own board that is working in the best interest of the citizens of our county. As far as the board of commissioners is concerned, we, we don't have any authority in it. And at this point, because of litigation, um, we're listening, we're aware of what's going on, but we can't comment at this time. So I'll leave it at that, okay? Thank you. All right, uh, item number seven, correspondence. Item A is a notice of hearing for a rate increase for a statewide rate increase for a consumers energy company. B is a resolution in regards to support of four-year terms for county commissioners. C is a, the resolution from Garish Township in regards to their, uh, their sewer authority. And I, that's just Garish Township. So that's their, um, Lyon Township is involved in that. And I understand that that'll be forthcoming. Item D is in regards to uh, a permit public notice for a seawall, I believe it is over in Holton Lake from the DEQ. And item E is a monthly report and, and some of the goings on that's happening at the airport, their newsletter for E. Any questions from any commissioner in regards to correspondence, please? Okay, there is a there is one thing there um, which kind of applies to Eric from the airport. I believe that's on page E five. Um, so uh, he's been got a little report in there. Just draw your attention to it. Okay. Any questions in regards to correspondence? Hearing or seeing none. Monthly department reports. We've got the animal shelter. And I see DD's on here. Does any commissioner have any questions for DD in regards to the animal shelter? Okay, seeing none. The sheriff and jail report. Actually, it's a jail report and uh I'd like to draw attention to the revenue for last month for March, almost $50,000. And I did speak with Lori, our, uh, our jail administrator. Expenses were also down. So uh, things are doing very well at the jail. So I wanted, I commended her on that. Anybody have any questions in regards to animal shelter or jail? Okay, seeing or hearing none. On to uh, number nine, any visitors that'd like to be recognized at this time, please. Okay, seeing or hearing none. Item number 10, any unfinished or new business, please.
Okay, hearing or seeing none. Item 11, motions and resolutions. Teresa, you are up. Motion number one, please. Move to authorize levy of the following ad valorem tax rate for the county of Roscommon for the year 2021 on the summer tax roll. 3.5496 mills. I'll make that motion. Okay, I'll, I'll second it. Motion is made by Commissioner Muckenthaler, seconded by Commissioner Snyder to authorize the levy of the ad borum taxes for the County of Roscom in the year 2021 summer tax general fund, 3.5496 mills. Any further discussion from any commissioner at this time? Hearing and seeing none, roll call. Melbourne. Yes. Melvin. Yes. Russo. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Muckenthaler. Yes. Motion number two, please. Move to adopt the attached resolution and authorize Chairman Robert E. Schneider, Director of Equalization, Jamie J. Hauserman, and County Clerk, Michelle M. Stevenson, to sign the statements of or acreage and valuations, L4024s, as equalized by the Roscommon County Board of Commissioners and County Board of Commissioners Assessment Roll Certifications, the L4037s, 2691, countywide totals, and individually for each municipality. So move, Mr. Chair. Second that. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Melbourne, seconded by Commissioner Russo to adopt the attached resolution for signature by the chairman the Director of Equalization and the County Clerk, Michelle Stevenson. Any further discussion, please? Okay, hearing no discussion. Uh, the only question I have is, is, I'm assuming we're gonna pass this, but I'll need to sign it, but I have got, who's got those papers? Oh, okay. Julie's got them out in the main office. Thank you. All right. Any further questions from any commissioner? Hearing or seeing none, roll call. Um, excuse me, can I read the resolution first? You already did. Motion, motion number two. Oh, yes, excuse me. You got two more, two more paragraphs. Go ahead. Yep. Thank you. No problem. So the resolution 2021-04. 01, the honorable members of the Board of Commissioners, County of Roscommon, Michigan, hereby certify that the assessment rolls of the townships and village have been examined and we find the rolls relatively equal as equalized. We recommend that the valuations be equalized on taxable property by class in Roscommon County for the year 2021 in compliance with sections 209.5 and 211.34 MCL of 1948 as amended and in, in accordance with the equalization certificates. So move, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yep, I got a motion made by Mr. Milburn and a second by Mr. Russo on that. Any further discussion from any commissioner on motion number two? Hearing or seeing none, roll call. Schneider. Yes. Mockenthaler. Yes. Melvin? Yes. Milburn? Yes. Russo? Yes. Okay, motion number three, please. Move to authorize Roscommon County Clerk Register of Deeds to use Automation 256 Fund in contract with U.S. Imaging to scan libraries 1 through 247 on-site, edit and index all images and convert to digital images for a cost of $81,763.16. I'll make that motion. A second. Motion made by Commissioner Milburn, seconded by Commissioner Muckenthaler to authorize the clerk register these to use the automation fund for imaging and scanning amount of $81,763.16. Okay, 
Any further comment from any commissioner at this time? Hearing or seeing none, roll call. Russo. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Milburn. Yes. Monkenthaler. Yes. Melvin. Yes. Okay, motion number four, which is the resolution number 2021-04-2. Go ahead, Reso Teresa. Resolution to authorize the continuation of the declaration of a local state of emergency for the County of Roscommon. Whereas on March 31st, 2021, the Roscommon County, the County of Roscommon passed a resolution declaring a local state of emergency in Roscommon County due to increasing numbers of COVID-19 infections. And whereas the County of Roscommon, while again trending downward in COVID-19 cases, continues to see a higher than average case, cases within the population of those unable to receive vaccination. And whereas the Board of Commissioners for the County of Roscommon supports all efforts to maintain decreasing COVID-19 numbers while continuing to allow for business and economic activities. And whereas by following the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services and Centers for D Disease Control and Prevention recommendations and guidelines, we can reduce the number of infections and death from the virus. And whereas the Board of Commissioners for the County of Ross Common has found it necessary to extend the declaration of a local state of emergency through June 30th, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners for the County of Roscommon, in accordance with Section 10 of 1976 Public Act 390, as amended, hereby declares that a local state of emergency continues within our communities and jurisdictions as of April 28, 2021, and that local resources and funding must continue to be utilized to the fullest possible extent to combat this local emergency. Be it further resolved that this declaration replaces the initial declaration submitted and approved on March 31st, 2021. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Okay, motion is made by Commissioner Melvin, seconded by Commissioner Russo to authorize a continuation of the declaration of the local state of emergency for the County of Ross Common. Any further discussion from any commissioner at this time? Hearing or seeing none, roll call. Melbourne. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Muckenthaler. Yes. Melvin. Yes. Russo. Yes. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Item number 12, committee reports at this time. Who's going first? Uh, Commissioner Buckenfeller, I'll go. Okay. Um, on the 14th, I've had the uh, Recycling Committee and the Solid Waste Committee. Uh, the 21st, there was a collaborative board meeting via Zoom. And that should be it. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Commissioner Buckenfeller? Nope. Okay. Commissioner, uh, who's back? Okay. Commissioner Russo. You know, the last couple of weeks been light. Uh, Home Lake is up a couple inches. I've been keeping close uh, track of that. Uh, basically, that's it for the end of the month. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Melvin. Yes, I had the uh, agenda meeting on the 22nd with Bob. And then uh, yesterday we had the LAPC meeting of note from that meeting. Um, Melissa at the Central Michigan Health Department gave an update. Uh, she said there are rising cases and those not old enough to get a vaccine. 
anyone can get the vaccine now at any of the shot clinics, even people that are not residents of Rouse Common County. So anyone can go to the shot clinic and as a walk-in get uh, the vaccine. Uh, she reported that 36.7% in their estimate is what has been vaccinated in Ross Common County. And I think I saw that the state average is 37%. So we're uh, just uh, three tenths of a point below what the state average is. She also reported that uh, Munson Grayling is 57% capacity of COVID patients. And I think she said five out of eight ICU beds are taken up with COVID patients. Uh, the uh, Homeland Security has delivered two robots to Crawford County for our area and they're training uh, on the use of those. And also it was reported that the missing person uh, over in Houghton Lake uh, was found deceased. I would like to thank uh, the state police, the township, uh, the Denton Sheriff's Department, the uh, Garish Township, uh, for all of the resources and manpower they put into uh, helping bring closure to the family and friends of the deceased. And that's all I have. Okay, any commissioners have any questions for Commissioner Melvin? Okay, Commissioner Melbourne. At MCAA, COA, and next Friday at 1 p.m., which is on the 7th, there's going to be a gathering for those who support the Together We Can COVID Re Resolution. Again, that'll be next Friday at 1 p.m. Trussell Park. All are invited. Thank you. All right. Any questions for Commissioner Melbourne, please? Any commissioners? Okay. As far as myself, I am somewhat like Commissioner Russo. Um, been a quiet two weeks. Um, did have the agenda meeting that we had last Thursday to prepare the agenda and the board meeting today. I do want to remind commissioners we have another meeting at 11 o'clock. Um, regards to the budget, in regards to the 2020 budget update and the 2021 budget overview. So that'll be at 11 o'clock today. So um, health department will be this afternoon down to Harrison. Uh, we are meeting in person. Um, so all precautions are, are, under, are taken down there. And Lake St. Helen is at uh, one and a half inches over summer level. So things are fine and it's uh, we're in good shape down there. Got some good rain last night. So thank you. And EDC Corporation, just as a reminder for Mr. Milburn tomorrow at eight o'clock. Okay. All I have under committee reports. Item 13, any public comment at this time, please? Okay, hearing and seeing none, I'm looking across my screen here. Last call for public comment. All right, thank you. Item 14, adjournment, please. No move, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion is made by Commissioner Milburn, seconded by Commissioner Russo to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Hope to see you guys in person in our, uh, for a hybrid meeting next month on uh, June, May 12th. Okay. Thank you. See you back here at 11 o'clock for our budget meeting. I got one minute to go here. Mr. Milburn, you're still muted. How's that, Bob? I can hear you now. Ken, are you out there? There you are. I'm here. Okay. Okay, I've got 11 o'clock on my computer. Uh, welcome to the special meeting of the budget and finance meeting of the whole, April 28, 2021 at 11 o'clock via Zoom. 
Item number two, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Melbourne, will you again please read us, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Mr. Chair. You'd be so kind to stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Okay, Teresa, number three, roll call a board member, please. Russo. Rosa. Schneider. Here. Muckathaller. Here. Milburn. Here in the county building. Melvin. Here. Okay, item number four, approval of the agenda, please. So move, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Milburn, seconded by Commissioner Muckenthaler to approve the agenda. Any further discussion from any commissioner at this time? Okay. Hearing or seeing none, roll call. Muckenthaler. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Russo. Yes. Melvin. Yes. Milburn. Yes. Okay, thank you. Item number five, any public comment at this time, please, in regards to our meeting of the whole budget and finance. Okay, hearing or seeing none, on to uh, number six, new business, item A, which is a 2020 budget update. And then after that, we'll go on to B. So Jody, take it away, please. Okay. So we're at that point now where all of our accruals for accounts payable and payroll have been in. Um, we've passed that uh, magic point where if revenues dedicated to expenses in 2020 occurred, we would be able to accrue them back. So I'm coming to you with a, a very finalized version uh, pre pre audit, obviously that starts on Monday of what our closing of 2020 will look like. Um, the first thing that I will tell you is we do have a motion on for today to ask the Board of Commissioners to authorize additional allocations from the general fund to some specific special funds. So I just wanted to touch on that really quickly. The first one we have talked about since the beginning of the pandemic, um, our juvenile detention center, which normally is a, is a break even, they traditionally are able to roll over like 30 to 50,000 a year in a fund balance. Um, but are meant to be self-sustaining. They were closed for over four months this year due to COVID um, with an inability to take youth as youth, youth obviously were not being placed in facilities. Um, no money comes in, there's no tax money for juvenile detention. So we are looking at needing to allocate $170,000 to them this year uh, in order to balance out fund 299. I will tell you, um, you know, they've worked very hard to to limit that number, but unfortunately, it's just the liability associated with placing a youth into a facility during COVID outbreaks is pretty large. So they are fighting kind of an up, up uphill battle right now. Um, they are used well. Uh, unfortunately, the caliber of people that are being placed in are those where there is no other choice but to place them into a juvenile detention facility. Um, so it's it's been rough. It's been a little harder. Um, can't have one person on at night, have, can only have two. So they are hanging in there. Um, and I think probably we'll have to have a meeting soon with them to see who, what, where, when, and why. The second fund that we need to allocate to uh, was our, our fund that we didn't know we were going to need um, until this time last year, uh, the COVID-19 fund, and that is where we took out expenditures in regards to, uh, to everything COVID-19 related. If we were providing people with COVID leave that came out of there, any additional expenditures, um, we are looking at 150,000 to balance out that fund for this year. The good news is that um, a lot of that money that you'll be transferring has come back in from those COVID-19 grant funding that we have received. I just need authorization to, to make that transfer since it was not one we had previously budgeted for. Um, our annual allocation to the law library of $20,000 was exceeded. 
um, by 6,000. It's more like 5,200, but I'd like to round up because this law library always seems to be a stinker at the end of the year. Um, so fund 269 law library would require an additional 6,000. Our last one for the specialty courts is actually um, the same cases we ended up with front of the court last year. We cannot legally have a negative cash balance for an account as of 1231 at the end of our fiscal year. Um, specialty courts is a fully reimbursable, but sometimes the reimbursements come in in 30 days and sometimes they come in in 90 days. So in order to make sure that we have a positive cash balance as of 1231, due to the timing issue of those reimbursements, um, I'm asking for $10,000 to be transferred from the general fund to the specialty courts fund. Um, I'd like it to sit there so that we don't have this problem every single year and have to ask for this money. So that would not be one um, that I would ask for a reimbursement from back. Our uh, circuit court administrator who does administer this fund does a really great job. She accounts dollar for dollar between what we uh, spend, what we request and what we get back. We will always have a timing issue though. And then if we transfer this 10,000 now, it'll cover not just this year, but it should cover future years as well. So that'll, that is where that motion comes into. Any questions on that before I kind of jump into wrapping up the general fund? Um, David gave um, me a no. The only thing, the only thing I have is, is that uh, um, the detention center that is something that that's that's going to probably have to be addressed here in the future. So, Ken, as chairman, I'd like you to take the lead on that. Okay. Okay. All right. I have. Any, I don't have anything else. Any other commissioners have any questions in regards to uh, the 299, the 290, the 269, and the 212, especially courts in regards to uh, 2020 budget overview? Okay, so we'll have a we'll have a motion later on for that. You want to go right into the 2021 budget review, Jody? Well, I'm going to give you just a quick recap on the general fund. Okay. Um, early on in September, at the end of September in 2020, I had a prediction of final revenues of about $10,498 or $498 million with final expenditures predicted at $9,473,943, um, which would end up leaving us with a fund balance percent of about 17.23%. I was a little off. Um, we ended up having to allocate a little bit more money to the COVID fund. Um, reimbursements don't come, again, quite as quick as we had always hoped. And additionally, we ended up with a little bit more um, of an allocation to the law library and to juvenile detention than I anticipated. So where I am at for our final estimates um, for the general fund is that we would be looking at revenues of 10289000 and final expenditures of 9,000 or 9,368,000. That would leave us with a fund balance of approximately 15.29%. Um, so I, I, was, I was a little off and so I apologize for that, but uh, I'm hoping, you know, we're still gonna be above our 15%, which we haven't been for a while. Um, additionally, I just want to point out, um, had this have been a, strict budget without that additional allocation from the tax payment fund, um, we would have only broken even this year. So we would not see an increase at all. So I guess I would like to, you know, really, again, thank our treasurer for being diligent on that and being able to, um, being able to make that assist. So we're essentially using that transfer to shore us up to a 15% fund balance um, per your policy. And we'll continue new with 2021. Um, additionally, we do have all of our other special funds that, um, with the exception of those, obviously, that we're looking for uh, those transfers to, all of them have increased their fund balances by roughly 2%. I do ask for our millage funds to have a year's worth of expenses in their fund balance. No one's there yet, but they're all um, been very diligently you know, watching their expenses to get to that mark and are getting very close. That way, if the millage fails, they're able to sustain for a year until they can to come up with a passage because clearly our general fund is not going to be able to cover a million dollars for Sheriff Road Patrol or 911 services. So now I'm ready to go to 2021 unless you have questions, sir. Okay, any questions for 
2020? I take it Davis got his no sign. Yep, okay. All right, go ahead, right into item B, 2021 budget overview. Okay, so for our first quarter, we are trending roughly 3% below our anticipated revenues. Um, for the general fund, normally we are looking at, normally we are about 16% for the general fund. At this point, we're about 13%. We never hit the actual, uh, you know, quarter mark of 25% at the beginning two quarters, simply because we do not bill for taxes um, for general fund collections until the summer. So we don't see that that big increase until the end of the, the end of the third quarter normally. Um, we do have an uptick in revenues beginning in the summer, um, and that obviously is, is a positive thing to look forward to. So we'll have a better idea come probably July of, ex of, of where we're going to be and if we need to look at, um, look at some changes. Good news is our expenses are below the anticipated 25%. We're at about 19% for our anticipated expenses of what we've budgeted. Um, another kind of positive to that is we are still receiving reimbursements for COVID expenses. Those grants last through, um, I believe it's actually the end of the quarter. So this year we've actually received about 66,000 to the general fund for COVID expenses and reimbursements. Um, those are being managed very well through our court and through our sheriff's office. So I appreciate that. We are looking um, at potentially needing to spend money on some projects that were not included in the budget, obviously lake level structure repairs, um, public parking lot projects, and then our prosecutor's office, we have recently learned, um, are going to need a certain type of laptop in order to utilize the, um, the software that allows them access off site. So that's something that we're probably gonna have to scrounge around for and see how we can help out with that because clearly it wasn't budgeted. As far as our special funds go, um, they are all well in line with our budgets that has that had been approved. I will tell you that our special fund millage revenues um, are collected in the winter, so they those taxes already appear in their budget, so their revenues look like they're through the roof um, for this time of the year. But it's just you know most of that ninety percent of those are, are millage funds for revenues. Um, the expenses are also very well in line with their budgets. Um, our public safety funds will see an increase in expenses in the summer as obviously our population like triples in the summer. Um, and that's also where you'll, you'll start to see a little bit more on the expenses as well. Um, quick rundown of some of the larger ones for 2021. So you're, you know where they're at year to date. 911 for expenses, 12%. Road patrol is at 24%. Animal control is at 19%. Friend of the court, 23%. Our child care fund is currently at 12%, but I will, again, you know, same thing being affected by COVID. So we may end up with some longer term placements um, as that continues. Gypsy Moth really hasn't spent anything. They're at 1% because they don't get busy for another month here. Our veterans department and our juvenile detention center at our 18% of their budget for expenses. And then the airport is hanging in at about 13%. So that's a quick snapshot of the first first quarter of 2021. Do you have any questions? Any commissioners have any questions regards to 2021 budget? Okay, hearing and seeing none. Uh, we will move to motions and resolutions. Teresa, you got it? Hi. Motion number one, please. Move to authorize the following additional allocations from the general fund to special funds for the purpose of balancing fiscal year 2020 expenditures pandemic. Fund 299, Roscommon Juvenile Detention Center, $170,000. Fund 290, COVID-19, $150,000. Fund 269, Law Library, $6,000. Fund 212, specialty courts, $10,000. Okay, looking for a motion and a second, I'll please. Move on that. Pardon me? So move. Okay. Motion is made by Commissioner Russo, seconded second. by 
Commissioner Melvin, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Any further comment from any commissioner? Hearing and seeing, seeing none. Roll call, please. Mockathaler. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Melvin. Yes. Russo. Yes. Melvin. Yes. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Item number eight, public comment, please. One more time today. Should say the last time. Okay, hearing and seeing none. Item number nine, motion and a second for adjournment, please. No move, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Milburn, seconded by Commissioner Russo to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, gentlemen, hope to see you in person next month on the May 12th at our meeting room, and we'll have our hybrid meeting and go from there. Thank you. Thank you.